A few weeks ago we built a GraphQL server with Apollo and Node.js. If you haven't seen that video, make sure to check that one out first to get a better understanding of GraphQL and Apollo, because in today's episode we're going to be tackling the front end side of this equation, which involves querying data and providing mutations with optimistic updates in our Angular app. If you're new here, make sure to like and subscribe, and send a thank you to Arjun Yellamanchelli, who was responsible for writing the code for this lesson. To get started, let's first talk about why Apollo and GraphQL are awesome technologies from the front-end developer perspective. Notice how when I click this heart button that the count increases, and then a second later our server responds with an error, and then it reverts back to the old value. That's known as an optimistic update or latency compensation. And if you use Firebase, you're probably already familiar with this because that's one of the things that the SDK does for you automatically. But if you're not using the Firebase SDK, this is a feature that would be really difficult to implement from scratch. Apollo Angular makes it easy to implement features like this, plus we can use it with any backend data source that we've set up in our GraphQL server. If we open this project in VS Code, you'll notice that we have a backend and frontend folder. The backend is the GraphQL server that we built in the first episode. We'll go in there and make some updates, but for the most part we'll be in the front end, which is an Angular 6 app. In our front end app, we're going to install Apollo Angular Boost, which is a client library that makes it easy to set up GraphQL in an Angular app. And also a library called Apollo CodeGen, which will allow us to generate TypeScript definitions from our server side automatically. Which is another really awesome feature that we'll see here in a few minutes. And lastly, we'll use the Angular CLI to generate an ng module for our GraphQL feature. Then we can go ahead and open up that module, and we'll want to import the Apollo Boost library and add it to the imports array in the ng module. Then we'll add Apollo Boost to the constructor of this module and call Apollo Boost Create, and then point it to wherever our GraphQL server is being hosted. In this case, we're hosting it on localhost 4000 slash GraphQL. And lastly, we'll make sure to import this GraphQL module inside of our app module. So that takes care of the front end setup, but now I'm gonna go into the back end and set up a mutation so we have some data that we can actually update in this app. Unlike a REST API where we would use something like post, patch, or put to update data in the back end, we just have a single mutation query that we can make that signifies data is going to be updated with this query. So we'll set up a mutation here that allows a user to like a tweet. To make that possible, we'll just create a mutation type called like tweet that takes in a tweet ID as an argument and then returns the newly created tweet as its response. Then we just need to write a resolver for this mutation. In the resolvers, we'll go ahead and create a mutation object, then give it a like tweet function that is asynchronous, meaning it returns a promise. Inside this function, we perform the mutation, which is just updating the tweet like count. So we'll go ahead and make a reference to the tweet itself, then pull the current count of tweets increment it by one, then update the data in the database, and lastly we'll return the freshest data from the database. And we'll also want to catch any errors here and return an Apollo error back to the client if the update fails. That takes care of the back end. Now I want to show you something really cool you can do on the front end with the Apollo CLI, which is generating all of your type definitions in your Angular app by making a query to your back end server. First I'm creating a new directory called types, and then we have this big long command here that you can copy and paste from the source code that will generate the types as a schema.json file. It does this by making what's called an introspection query, which is a special thing in GraphQL that will return the entire schema of the database to your front-end client. But it's extremely powerful if you're a front-end developer because you now know the entire shape of all of the data that's available in the back end. So you can see here we now have a TypeScript type for the tweets query that retrieves the items from the database, and then also another one for the like tweet mutation, which will update the tweet count. Now let's go ahead and put these types to use in our app component. As you saw from the demo, we need this component to loop over an observable array of tweet content, and also update the like count when the heart button is clicked. So we'll bring in Apollo and GraphQL, a few things from RxJS, and the types that we just generated. First, we'll declare a property called tweets, which is just an observable of the tweet data. Then we have the tweets query, which is a GraphQL object that defines how we retrieve this from the GraphQL backend. This is nice because we can explicitly define the data that's needed for the front-end user experience, which in this case would just be the tweet ID, the text content, and the like count. The next step is to send this query off to our backend and return the data as an observable. So Apollo is a service that we can inject in the constructor, and then to make a query we can call Apollo watch query, which is just a reference, 
and then to get an observable back of the data, we call value changes on it. Then the actual observable will contain some additional metadata, so we can just pipe that down to the actual data that we want to show in the front end. And now we have an observable that we can just subscribe to with the async pipe in the HTML, which we'll see here in a minute. The mutation is similar, but takes in an ID as a variable, so that value can change depending on which heart button the user clicks. So we'll define the actual GraphQL query inside of this method, which we're calling like tweet, and then it takes in the ID as an argument, and it will return all of the new data about that tweet, including its updated like count. Instead of using Apollo watch query like we did last time, this time we'll use Apollo mutate. And what's special about this is that we can define our own optimistic response behavior. In our case, we know when the user hits the like button, it should increment the current like count by one. So by setting up this logic, we'll have that update appear in the UI instantly in the eyes of the user. And in most cases, we won't have any errors on the back end, so it'll just stay there like it happened instantaneously. But if any kind of error does happen, it will come back and revert to the actual value from the server. So it'll feel like there's zero latency for your user, even though in real life it might take your server a second or two to respond. So now we can jump into the HTML, and we just have a simple observable of tweets that we can loop over. I am wrapping it in parentheses, then accessing its tweets property because that's where the actual tweet objects live. Then we can display the text for each tweet, and then we'll set up a button here that will update the like count. Then below that, we'll display the like count, which should update instantly when this button is clicked. On my backend code, I set up a method that will give a 50-50 chance of throwing an error for each mutation. So the first time I click the button, it goes to 77, gets an error, then reverts back to 76. On the second attempt, we don't get an error, it stays at 77, and then we get the tweet data logged in the console. Overall, Apollo gives you an awesome way to query a GraphQL API from an Angular app. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe, and if you want to learn more about these technologies, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get access to all kinds of exclusive content and a free copy of my book. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.